Welcome back to the channel. This is a short video. I wanted to show you about the trunnion table. I decided not to use the original thick table um, as a one-off for this job. I thought I'd show you that I've made a sub plate to do these billet aluminium runners. Um, so I'm just gonna go through what we've done. So we had alignment issues before, if you see one of my previous videos. Um, and then I did a little practice and used um, a short trunnion plate there to test out doing some bore operations or for the internal operations for the ports. Everything was good. Now, I wanted to see how easily it was to align the long table again because the little one doesn't allow us the room. So when we're gonna machine on this piece here, it doesn't allow much room at the side. So we had to go back to the long plate, but I don't wanna just use the long plate. It was like 130 pounds for one bit of plate. Be cheaper if you bought a full sort of five meter length, but I didn't, I bought an individual piece. It's about 130 pound plus the VAT and delivery. And I don't want to just use one plate per job. Um, which, you know, the jobs are okay. They do warrant it, but it'd be nice to be able to use the training table for something else. So just want to show you what we've done. Initially, I put this back on and got it clocked up. And now the good thing is, I got all this back on and clocked up within 30 minutes this time. Once we had, obviously, if you watched the previous videos about trunnion um, alignment issues, once I'd sort of squared these faces up and everything was a little bit more true and I took the original dowel pins out, you could tap this up and align it within 30 minutes, which is fantastic. Now, what I've done is I've put a bolt pattern on here. Um, there's just 14 M6 by one threads that are tapped into the plate, they don't go all the way through, they just go sort of three quarters of the way down, and two dowel pins. Now, this plate is clocked up in every way, shape or form, and is nice within, it's less than 0 0.01 millimeters. Now I've put dowel pins, which are in line um, with the center of rotation, so the wire is the center of rotation, and the wire um, zero is the dowel pins. So we know where we're at always. Now. Because I want to be able to take this off and put it back on, and potentially in the future, um, I'm probably going to stick with these for this piece and only use these. In future, I'll make these again out of steel, out of ground, uh, and make sure they're nice and true and do things slightly differently. But I want to be able to use this plate for various jobs. So now that this is aligned and we've got our dowel pins in location, whilst it was all bolted together and true, Trying to show you. Obviously, we've got our three M16 low head cap heads in there. I actually drilled and counterboard and knocked in some eight mil dowel pins whilst it was aligned. So all I done was I rotated it 180 degrees so it was true to the Z. And I came in and I pocketed it and I spotted it and I drilled it. Um, and I only used the drill so it was a tight fit for the pins. And then I just knocked them in down there with a punch. Um, so it will come off, but it will also make sure it's aligned because we want the fixture, or we want this trunnion table to always be in alignment with these pins. So that's why I want it, because if I didn't put dowel pins in here now, then next time I um, center this up, this could be off over here, or this one could be here, because the holes for the M16 cap heads have got about a millimetre of plate. So the plate could end up wonky, it could end up a millimetre to one side. So I wanted to pin it and use dowels to put it in these supports. So that this is gonna be one unit now, not get taken apart. And then we've got our dowel pin. So if we just rotate a, um, let's just go back here. I've spun it around a few times, so there we go. Get it back to zero. Right, now, if you see, you wouldn't have seen it yet, but I'm gonna do these in one op in vices, which is, as you see here, this is the billet runners, one op. Um, and we've taken the weight of this from 20 kilos down to roughly 12 kilos, I think it was. And now I wanna do the whole rest of this on the trunnion. Um, but I did, as I said, I didn't wanna bolt this directly to the trunnion table. I wanted to make it um, fit on a sub plate. So that is what we've got here. So just ignore this flange for the minute. Now this is just half inch aluminium plate. We've got two holes here 
the Dow pins and we've got the matching bolt pattern. The underside has just got some counter bores. So you'll see that that plate fits on the pins there. And obviously all these counter bores fit with the bolt pattern on the plate. So we'll bolt these down um, with M6 by one with washers. So they'll go in there and get done up all the way around. It's 14 of those to hold the plate down. If we need to, we can skim the plate flat, but I've put a clock over it and it's good enough. I don't need to do anything with it. Now, these cutouts here that you can see, if you imagine this is a test flange, it's exactly the same as that. So you imagine this whole workpiece will be sitting on here like that. Now, when we come in as one of the final ops and we do these bores, we don't want the swarf and chips to build up inside the bore, because in the original plate, down here, we put in big 27 mil holes for everything to drop out of. Well, obviously I don't want to drill through here and into this. I want to keep this as good as I can. So what I've done is I've put these slots, big wide slots coming out of each port so that it can still potentially get clogged up with swarf, but the coolant and everything will run out and it will get rid of it and allow it to go down rather than filling up to the lid and then you're milling inside just a, a coolant swarf mixture, you know, making like a lapping paste and probably going to potentially ruin your finishes. So this is our sub plate and you can see here that all the holes on this flange line up with all these holes in the sub plate. And now if I can lift this off one handed, which I probably can't, he says he can't lift it off one handed. Oh, we sort of nearly can. What a mission. Right, we're nearly there. There we go. You can see that these holes are counterboard. Again, for M6 cap heads, and two bigger ones there for M10, which will allow this piece that is M6 threaded and two M10 threads and the two holes for the dowel pins to be put onto this subplate, bolted from the underside, and then the subplate gets bolted to the trunnion table. So I'm gonna bolt that together now and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, we got our M6 cap heads in, and then we've got two M10s in there as just a bit of extra bite. Now, the only thing we always need to make sure is that we're sat flush below the surface. So I can just run across there with a steel rule and make sure everything's good and make sure nothing is stuck to it. Now, I'll prop you there for a second. Again, making sure nothing is on the table, nothing is in the way, we can then get the sub plate, turn it upside down, and sit it on to our trunnion. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna put the 14 M6 cap heads around there. So you can see we've got all the cap heads in around here, and now you can see these troughs coming out in line with where the pulps are and some on the back. So you can see we've got our block mounted there on the table and we've got a lot more room either side if we're running across here with face mills or down the side with longer reach end mills. So let's just give it a rotate. So obviously you can see the back side of the part there. Same again, it's got two runouts for the coolant. There's the back of our part. So this surface is the finished um, size for the flange, this 15 millimetre bit here. The rest of it has got to come out. And obviously this section here was what was held, about that much was held in the vices in op one, so we couldn't get to it. <coughs> Excuse me, bit of a sore throat. Um, so yes, this is where we're at. That's where we're gonna do op two and three, four, five, six, seven, and we're gonna try and do everything on the trunnion. The only thing I've got to do now is check tool clearances and stuff like that, because when we did the ops before, we were in vices, and say for example, I was working on this face, the vice jaws would have only been to here and this would have all been sticking clear. So I need to make sure that we're gonna clear with tools all along here, and I may even model this in um, as fixture to the part to make sure everything clears and we're not gonna run into no issues. But there it is, wanted to show you the subplates 
on the machine and that's going to make my life a bit easier hopefully fingers crossed and um, one thing to remember for me in comparison to how i did this in the vices i now need to pick up a different um, and repeatable datum for my x um, when i set my g59 i think i wrote me on g59 so beforehand i had a finished um, face of the part in here and I wrote and I had everything center rotation and the X was there because I could touch off on the finished face of the part but now I haven't got that obviously there's nothing so what we're going to do we're going to model this up and our center um, or our X point is going to be the dowel pin on this plate so I've done YZ as center rotation which will always be the case and in X you can put it wherever you want to. But so we can repeat on this trunnion, for any job we're doing, X is now gonna be, it's just under there, you can't see it now, but X will basically be the dowel pin there. So before this plate gets put on, I come down here with a clock, I clock around the dowel pin, and the center of that pin is my X. And obviously that is modeled in relation to this plate in the program, so we know, doesn't matter what op I'm on, I haven't got to worry about trying to come down here and probe on the side of a face and oh, there was stock to leave, I didn't get it, and things like that. We know I can probe it, and I can probe everything on here, and I know that if I'm using a subplate, then it will always be in the same place, and I've just got to make sure that matches the model. So there's my subplate set up for the trunnions. Thought a few of you might want to see that. Once again, please uh, hit the thumbs up if you like the content, and please subscribe. So see you again soon.